Well, now, now that we're finished with the with season six of Ray Donovan, I can move on to other things. But first, I have to recap all of this for you because I've got production notes. Okay, not actual production notes from the show, but these are just what I've written down just so I can recap them for this, because our long stuff like this is really impossible for me to watch. Even for a premium channel, it's really hard to recap this stuff, so you're going to have notes for this one, but it will be the last notes for now. So this week we're taking a look at The Dead. Yes, I'm not sure what this one's referencing in this episode. I mean, it could be one of the folklores or whatever that they're talking about, but uh, let's talk about that when we get to that. Let us start with the recap. It may be odd for me to talk about this, but normally at the beginning and ending of the seasons, it's always like a big fact that, that you have to talk about the recaps of each episode, or at least the seasons, because... Once the season begins, you get the recap. This, the season right here for Ray Donovan, this season with Staten Island Part 1, it had no recap. It just opened up with Ray and his hallucination at the end of Season 5. Here, we see every single thing that happens in this show, at least this season, and the next thing is, we're showing everything, but instead of like the normal, like characters talking, bam, 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 here's the action, all that good stuff, instead, it opens up with just those scenes, well, the uh, music's playing called New York, I Love You, but... You're Bringing Me Down by LCD Sound System. Now, it took me actually a good while to figure out what LCD Sound System was. And as it turns out, um, basically I looked them up, and as it turns out, they were actually in Grand Theft Auto 4 in the in the in-game radio station, Radio Broker. One of their songs that was inside the game, at least for GTA 4, I'm not sure about its other variation, about the Lost and Damned and Ballad of Gay Tony extensions, but LCD sound system was in the game with the song Get Innocence in I don't remember what it is I mean I may need to take a listen to that one again but who knows what that song was like I'm not gonna play it here because of copyright reasons all that hoo ha but yeah a recap music sounded familiar it was a little bit weird not like having the standard like, season recap and everything, where everyone's talking, action, talking, all that. Big major hitting points in the show. And instead just getting that recap, but with just the song playing. It just felt weird. But, now that the recap is done, we can move on with the finishing plot lines. And it opens up immediately where we're at Sandy's home as they're basically working on burying the bodies of the, um, the people there, the ones that kidnapped Bridget and all that. So they grab the two and they're doing all they can to not only bury them, but also to dismember them, almost like something out of Dexter. This is the second time I've ever made a Dexter reference, because as we see of the episode ending, they mention about bringing the bodies of chopping up and uh, basically throwing them into the sea. That's 
that's Dexter right there. Which, if you haven't seen Dexter, I at least recommend you take a look at it. It is a good show for a certain amount of seasons. Though, you may want to pay attention to what you pick your eyes on for the season. Anywho... Like, as they're dismembering the bodies and everything, Smitty is sort of distraught about this, knowing that he's part of the Donovans... Uh, like, all this stuff that goes down with the Donovans, all that, all the buried bodies, all the crazy schemes that they get into, having to deal with being standalone fixers themselves. Even the other family members know how to deal with bodies like this. So, yeah, that's basically what this family does for a living. Okay, not all of them, but you sort of get the idea. Ray winds up basically calling Mickey during all of it to talk about his mother, and... Ray gets a little bit confused, a little bit in denial, thinking that he's been, that, um... Because what happens is, is that Mickey's telling him the story about how his mother... Well, <clears throat> I don't know how to express this, is that... While well, Ray's mother passed on, almost expressing the same day as we've seen in this show... While Ray's mother passed on, Mickey attempted to be there as much as possible to try and help Terry and Bunchy and Ray uh, with going to bed, and he'd tell the story and everything. And Ray sort of gets a little bit in denial about it, mostly because, well, how much of your childhood can you remember, and if you ever remember anything? It's a really big benefactor, and a lot of people are very affected by this. Where they don't remember what they did as kids, only like bits and pieces here and there. Like how I was young, and this is a true story, I was able to delete a whole server, and no one even knew how to figure out how to get it back. Didn't happen to a major place, just the family servers, all that. But true story. Even like they tell a story, they even remember it, but I don't. It's kinda like that. So it's sorta kinda why raised a bit sorta in denial and confusion on whether or not that's actually true or not. But we'll learn more as hopefully the time goes on, if ever. Yeah, but afterwards, Ray basically is, sits at a funeral home or parlor. I don't, I'm not sure what the proper name for a, pla for a place like that is. But basically, Ray leaves, t uh, calls Lena, or basically, Ray, basi Ray leaves the funeral parlor, I'm thinking of another scene, Ray leaves the funeral parlor as Lena heads in and waits patiently for her next given command, because that's Ray Donovan for you, always Lena there to do some things for Ray. That's the way that fixing goes. Which, we'll look into that story later, where we wind up seeing Terry arriving at Sandy's home, taking a look at the whole ordeal on Basically, them dismembering the bodies, burying them, even using uh, the raccoon technique to try and disorient the dogs and everything. 
which is an interesting trick they that they had. I'm not I don't dig too deeply into crime stuff, but that is pretty fascinating to say the very least. The next thing on the agenda is Basically, Terry informing Mickey about the deal with the FBI and having to turn Mickey in in favor of sort of having Bunchy's sentence lighting. But even Mickey knows that it's a scheme. Which, in turn... Calls up Ray, basically telling him about Bunchy in prison, or at least the deal, and he just basically said, Stay there and do nothing. That'll play later on. What winds up happening is, is Ray ar arrives at Samantha's building, sort of getting even for leaking the audio and heading up that article to the Tribune. Which, all of that is because it gets Ray sort of ticked off because it nearly cost him his one and only family member. Because, don't forget, Connor's long gone from the show, so we'll no longer see him. So there's that. And it's not the only thing that he does to try and get even. The guy that knocked him out in... What was it? I forget the episode, but... Okay, here it is. The Free One Two. So in the free one to basically is when Ray gets knocked out by one of Samantha's characters, or at least one of her bodymen, bodyguards. I I'm not sure of the right term here, but basically as. Ray gets led into the building by that guard. Basically, the lights go out in the scene. And as quietness happens, door opens, and the guy's completely knocked out. Almost getting even for what um, he did to Ray. Except Ray may have done it a bit harder than expected. Or maybe it was playing more into another benefactor. Maybe. I don't know. But yeah. He arrives to try and get even for the audio, nearly costing his daughter. And basically, Ray is distraught. He doesn't even know what to do. Because he's still in that mindset seeing about his the lossing of his wife, so he's still in that, and it's basically like Ray having to overcome the death of his... It's him having to overcome the death of his one and only love, beloved, that he's married. Which, of course, as Ray heads down from the building, he try he calls Arthur again, but still, can't bring himself to call him up. He's just constantly just being like, attempts to call him. Either Arthur answers or he doesn't, it goes to voicemail. Just waits a few seconds and just hangs him up. Not saying anything on the phone. No hi, no can I speak with you whenever possible. None of that.
which I hope in the next season that Ray would at least visit poor old psychiatrist Arthur and at least he can sort of cope with his whole situation, his whole ordeal, which many suffer from, but Ray is like a special case. While we're on that subject, or at least going off of it, basically Smitty and Bridget decide that today they're going to get married. So, basically Smitty and Bridget wind up finding some clothes that are in Sandy's closet and use that to get married. And they have to bring at least one lit witness to this, and they decide to bring Terry into all of this, because why not? And while Mickey and Daryl basically dispose of the bodies in the bridge, or the river, or the lake, whatever you want to call the big blue wet thing, reference to Mother Treasure Island, which, also, that's another one that's in vain to Dexter, is chopping up the body into pieces and throwing it into the lake and everything. I mean, with Dexter, that's what he did. He'd find his victims, and after sort of tormenting them and giving them a trademark slit on the side of their, on their cheeks, keeping a little bit of the blood sample as his collection, and basically kills him, dismembers the bodies, hits in his boat, travels as far as he can into the the lake or the river, the big blue wet thing, and throws the body, each piece of the body into the ocean. That's Dexter right there. They're pulling off stuff that is relate that is like in the Showtime show, except they don't do the cutting of the cheeks or anything like that. As interesting as that would be. But again, it's not a Dexter crossover. Moving on. Basically, as the whole Smitty and Bridge getting married thing actually comes to play in this episode, they all... Like, basically, Smitty, Bridge, and Terry sit there waiting for um, their chance in line to get married, because they're inside this big place, and it's like, I would say it's like an express marriage, like one of those you walk in, sit down, they call your number, walk in, you're married, and then you leave. I've never seen anything like that. I mean... It, it could be common in some cities and whatever, but I don't remember such a thing. I don't know if things like this actually do exist. I mean, who knows? I, I could be Googling this after I record this whole thing and get it published to YouTube. Who knows? Like, they could actually exist. Maybe one of my commenters, what little there is, would actually tell me that these exist. But, I'll believe them. I will actually believe them. Anywho, basically as Smitty gets some water, basically Bridget tells Terry about his, about Ray's attempted suicide. And that's what happens? He basically, t she basically tells Terry about it, and sort of gets Terry a little bit thinking in the mind because, as you've known by this point, as much as we've seen Terry like upset over Bunchy's decision to try and end his life, basically it's gonna bounce off this time on Ray. Because Ray's been suffering for 
months now, days, weeks, months, who knows how many, how many days these lasted after nearly committing suicide and getting saved by the now rest in peace Officer Mac. So, that's going to be on the back of his mind for a while. Then what happens, afterwards, is Ray visits Ferrati to try and kill him. But not only is he outnumbered, but also he winds up making Ray an offer, a favor, if you will. Because his life was just turned into a disaster, a mess, all that. All because of the whole campaign and the ordeal he had to deal with the corrupt police and the basically without a choice Mac and all these other situations that happened. Even Samantha like going out to try and get him to stay focused on the campaign, all that. All of it happens so quickly and so fast he has no clue on what to do next. So, he makes him an offer. And basically, Ferrari obviously knows that he didn't want anything to happen with Ray's daughter, and basically makes Ray an offer, which, of course, seeing as how he's already basically nearly killed off Novak's campaign, thanks to having Ray have to work with Rand and uh, the actual re-elected mayor, that basically has to happen. So, afterwards, Ray winds up... Okay, I'm on the right page. Basically, as Ray walks out to the campaign building where Novak is going to be, and obviously where Samantha is, As he walks up to the building and stands, he basically gets interviewed by everyone and he basically lets out the truth on how the campaign was done, how he, how all these political stunts happened to get Novak's votes down and everything and get Ferrati back in the high top of the election campaign. So, basically, it in turn basically screws them over. But in some slightest sense, it's kind of their fault they bring Ray into this mess. It sort of is. Meanwhile, basically at the beginning of the episode where... where Ray basically leaves the funeral parlor and Lena heads in, she basically winds up receiving a text from Ray on the location of the perpetrator that was attacking her and basically leaves him inside this abandoned building, which has been used a few times in this season now, and by a few times I mean like two, like two times. So basically Lena heads in, sees her perpetrator that nearly killed her as she basically ties him down, uh, jumps off, and basically kills him. That actually really hurts. Don't try it at home, kids. Anywho. Let's get a few things quickly and done 
because there's some portions of this I want to talk about and updates as far as we know. Basically, Ray frees Bunchy from the one of the FBI buildings there. He talks with or basically Bridge and Smitty celebrate their marriage. Mickey's still talking about their relative and all that. Terry sits outside waiting for something. Ray and Bunchy arrive as like Terry stands out and warns Ray never to think about killing himself off and how he needs help. All that. Because Terry does not want to see any of his family members die. Especially after what happened in the last season. Because after all of that, that left Ray distraughted. It left him into a big nervous wreck. And that's sort of what happens. But for another quick wrap up, and there's like multiple of these, the family sits inside, tells stories about the fa about their past, their families, and Mickey tells of a legend of snow in Ireland and one of their relatives, and even one portion where I don't know whether or not to believe Mickey on it, but in one portion he just says he was there as he talks about that story, about the legend. Which, if they're talking about the Scottish, talking about Scotland, it could be a reference to the scene where Ray was on the building seeing the Statue of Liberty in the episode where Connor heads off to the Far East and everything. What is it? Um, that's Ellis Island. Yeah, Ellis Island. That's where he talks about the Scottish story. The, the Scottish, like spirit that Ray winds up coming across, having a chat with her, but as it turns out, it was a ghost. It was a sibling from the Donovan family. Their past, all that. It's... It's just mind-blowing. All this is almost coming into circle. Like, oh my god! That is... That is crazy! <sighs> so, as they're talking about their past selves, their stories and everything, Ray steps outside and decides to at least give him one more chance. One more chance to call up Arthur and talk to him. Which, at that time, Arthur answers the phone, Ray responds, talks about him, talks about it for a bit, sets up an appointment to, for Ray to visit Arthur, and even he knows about the multiple times that Ray's called him. So he's like, is it some, like, some strange person prank calling me, not saying a thing? Who might it be? Well, actually, most cell phones would have caller ID, but... You know, I'm not sure if newer phones would have the capability of caller ID. I mean, if you set up a contact or whatever on a phone, you'll be able to know who's calling you. Especially if you save the number on the phone. But, I'm not sure about, like, strangers calling you. But again, there have been a few times where I have gotten calls from strangers that actually have been caller ID'd a few times. But, I could be just be suffering Mandela effect. 
But yeah, for more wrap-ups, basically, Ray sets up the appointment with Arthur whenever possible as it begins to snow in New York. As Ferrati is officially re-elected, Novak leaves disappointed in her non-victory, Samantha winds up, of course, hanging herself. After all the crap that she put Ray through. And in the end, Ray basically returns inside, and at this point, we could sort of say we have a happy ending. Pseudo-mixed happy ending with this, and that's basically Ray Donovan Season 6. That is The Dead. Oh, boy! What a finale this has been. An insane quick yet grand finale that at least freshens itself up a bit from the last season after we see like all those flashbacks and everything and waiting for like half the show, half the season to at least get back to the normal Ray Donovan story so we aren't going through flashbacks of the family and before Abby passes on. So, I'm glad we're out of that, so... And this is basically, this season is just Ray trying to learn how to be... sort of try and get himself together, know which side to properly stand on, knowing that there's people there for him. I mean... That finale from Season 5, I mean, even when I saw it and didn't even announce the June release, I was like, I had, like, crap stains. I was, like, scared out of my wits. It's like, are they going to continue Ray Donovan? Are they jumping the shark, ending the show there? How can you have Ray Donovan without Ray Donovan? It's not possible! But, at least Officer Mac was there to save him. That's the important part. It's, I feel like that this is the season that Ray sort of opens up. Even if he doesn't express it at first, it's him having to open up to life. He's going through all the, well, at least... This is like half of Ray going through his stages of grief since the passing of Abby. And it's like, this one? This one is sort of like acceptance. Like Ray accepting the passing of Abby and moving on. Almost familiar to Ellis Island where Connor leaves and all that. It's... Again, this show really brings out just how real it is. And hopefully that tangent didn't go on for so long, unlike that episode. But yeah, Season 6. Admittedly, it's a lot better than Season 5, without a doubt. So I no longer have... So at least, I know that the show is getting renewed for Season 7, but in general, Season 6, it was pretty good, it was pretty great. We had a lot of great cast, a lot of great development of each situation that's been going on. Like, it will be just well worth the time to re-watch every one of these Ray Donovan episodes as soon as the series ends, and... Pretty much, I'm going to give this the satisfactory B. Like, school grade B. I don't need to say anything else. It's just the whole season in general gets a B. So, that's... That's it. 
That's Ray Donovan, Season 6. Look forward to returning for Season 7. And in the end, I hope all goes well with you, and I will see you back next time for Season 7. Now, a big question is, is, well, what do I do now? Well, I don't know if there's much I can do, on one hand, though I do have the Movie Fridays for the Top 40 to do my Top 40 Favorite Movies list, don't forget. But I am, I am also working on a PMV right now. A PMV means Pony Music Video. It's basically AMV except with MLP. So basically there's that to deal with. And overall in general I hope you enjoyed some of these Ray Donovan videos and Whenever the 600th video comes out, if I can ever get it finished, I look forward to seeing you guys there for that said video. And hope you enjoyed, and if you like what you've seen here and you want to see more, well, just wait until the slate if you want to see more. Hope you enjoyed Season 6. Uh, leave your thoughts down below in general on what your favorite season is, and I guess, as always, I'm the Furby Guy, and I'll see you guys for the next whatever piece of product I have. So, yeah, that's it. So, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to try and see what that LCD sound system that was in GTA 4 was, because I completely forget. So, um, yeah. Bye.